Uh, Minister, I too have been absolutely appalled by the media coverage and commentary by certain people in the media uh, in the last week in response to this report. I agree that the methods of assessment were defective, that uh, having a policy by George Harding Clark of taking oral evidence, meeting only a handful of the women who were, uh, who were involved, if she had met more, she would have seen for herself some of the injuries, the limping, etc., that these w women uh, endure. Using uh, contemporaneous radiology, uh, in one particular case, the judge stating that a 2004 x-ray uh, did not show injuries to the women and that therefore the injury had happened after. I mean, it, it's incredible. The judge went way beyond her brief, uh, showed her own bias and, and showed contempt for these women. And I think it's absolutely vital that this doll and the government agrees to set aside time in this doll for us to have a proper analysis of this report. There's a couple of myths that the report, the report tries to, um, to knock down. Number one, that symphysiotomy was a normal procedure practiced in many countries, argued by Paul Cullen, for example, in the Irish Times. The National Maternity Hospital in 1944 uh, it had four of these operations, in 1948 it had 43, because of the arrival of Dr. Alex Bain, an arch-Catholic uh, head of the hospital who refused and, and said that caesarean sections, the results would be contraception, the mutilating operating of sterilization and marit marital difficulty. So it's utterly uh, wrong to, to say that. Uh, they also argued that it wasn't dangerous, but in fact, clearly uh, it was. It was not a benign procedure. Uh, it wasn't used in other countries as a, a first resort. It was used as a last resort. And this is a third whitewash report that there's been, and it's a disgraceful indictment Thank you. of this system that it does that to women who were brutalised in Catholic Ireland in the past. Thank you very much, Deputy Coppinger. Thank you, Cahir. Look, I'd like to thank Deputy Daly and Coppinger for raising this matter this evening. A very important matter. Um, it occupied quite a considerable uh, amount of time in the last all, uh, in particular with the cross-party report uh, into symphysiotomy. Judge Maureen, Hard Maureen Harding Clark submitted her report on the surgical symphysiotomy scheme to the n on the 19th of October last. Minister Harris e examined the report and submitted to government last week prior to its publication on the department's website on the 22nd of November. And Minister Harris has asked me to convey his apologies to you that he can't be here this evening. Government agreed in July 2014 to establish an, an ex gracia scheme for women who underwent the procedure and the surgical synesthesiotomy payment scheme was established in November 2014. Judge Clark was appointed independent assessor. The scheme provided an alternative, non-adversarial option for women, many of whom were elderly, and didn't wish to pursue their cases through the courts. The total cost of the scheme was just under €34 million, Euro, and payments of €50,000, €100,000 or €150,000 were made to 399 women who met the criteria for an award. All of the women have received their respective payments totalling €29.85 million. Euro. The majority of claimants were aged over 75 years and payments were made to women between the ages of 51 and 196 years of age. 185 women who applied to the scheme could not establish that they had a surgical symphysiotomy. Pubiotomy was frequently claimed was it was established in only one case. Significant disability was established in this case. As the scheme was designed to be simple, straightforward and non-adversarial, the women are not expected to give oral testimonies as they might do in a court setting. In the interest of accountability, the scheme required each applicant to prove that she had a surgical synthesiotomy or pubiotomy in order to be considered for the assessment of an award. The level of proof required was clearly set out in the terms of the scheme. Judge Clark worked with each woman or her legal representative to locate medical records. The judge met some women in different parts of the country when she considered that this was necessary. Where claims could not be reconciled with established facts, women were examined by relevant medical experts. Judge Clark encouraged women who believed they had a synthesiotomy to apply to the scheme, advising them that, not, that they did not give up their right to pursue their case to the courts by doing so. It was only on accepting an award under the scheme that a woman had to discontinue her legal proceedings. The vast majority of women opted to do so. 
The scheme was established following two independent reports which were commissioned by the Department of Health and following consultation with all three support groups by the then Minister for Health. Two of the support groups welcomed the scheme and one support group did not. The first of these reports was commissioned in 2011 where the Department commissioned Professor Una Walsh to undertake independent research into the practice of symphysiotomy. Professor Walsh's research was included in a public consultation. The report recommended that an ex gracia scheme be established. In 2013, retired Judge Yvonne Murphy was commissioned by Government to undertake a further independent review on the legal aspect of synthesiotomy in Ireland. Judge Murphy advised Government on the merits and costs of proceeding with an ex gracia scheme relative to taking no action and allowing the court process to proceed. Synthesiotomy was an exceptional and rare intervention in obstetric practice in Ireland. It occurred in less than 0.05% of deliveries between 1940 and 1985. It is estimated that around 1,500 synthesiotomy procedures were undertaken in Irish hospitals and that there were around 450 women living who underwent the procedure. In most of the world, especially in Europe, the symphysiotomy procedure has been replaced mainly with the cesarean section procedure by the 1950s. Currently, the procedure is rarely performed in developed countries, but is still performed in rural areas and resource-poor settings of developing countries, where cesarean sections are not available or obstetricians may not be available to deliver subsequent pregnancies. The brief given to Judge Clark in November 2014 was not an easy one. At that time, the advice to the Department of Health was that many women would face an uphill struggle in providing their claims in the courts, improving their claims in the courts, apologies, with an uncertain outcome, as each case would be adjudicated on its merits. In her substantial report, Judge Clark has provided a comprehensive re overview of the historical and medical context of synthesiotomy. Judge Clark had a unique opportunity to do this, and her findings support the earlier findings of Professor Walsh. Payments under this scheme, together with the ongoing provision of medical services by the HSE, including medical cards, represents a comprehensive response to the issue by government, which should help to bring the resolution to women, many of whom are now elderly, and also to their families. Um, there has been an attempt by the Catholic right to seize on this report, highly flawed report, to argue uh, against the whole questioning of Catholic control of maternity hospitals. There is no question that this was done and motivated by a, a Catholic medical theology. Um, it's also argued very, very patronisingly that these women didn't know the difference between a caesarean section, a symphysiotomy, or anything else that was happening to them. Now, I know women were kept in ignorance, but I think most women would know if they had their pelvic bones broken. Um, the scheme relied on written evidence <coughs> and radiological evidence, which was highly unfair particularly to, to prove a symphysiotomy happened over 50 years ago is incredibly difficult if the records don't exist and actually mitigates against the older women. Um, some younger women were able to successfully <coughs> pursue their claims. And just because it was 185 unsuccessful applications does not mean that there wasn't 185 symphysiotomies. It's, as I said, it's difficult to prove. People were also given 20 days to apply to the scheme, which is highly questionable to gather up their information. There is no way that the doll could and should stand over this report. And it's absolutely urgent that a debate takes place in this chamber to question the rationale of this judge. Thank you very much for your cooperation. Deputy Minister, you have two minutes to conclude. Thank you. Uh, thank you, deputies. And I think any of us who... Um, had, I suppose, the privilege of delivering children and healthy children and having good experiences can only but be um, completely sympathetic with the people who um, underwent such a, a dreadful procedure. Um, just, it might be helpful maybe to um, provide some information on Judge Clark's methodology in carrying out her role as the assessor to the scheme. Um, the terms of reference uh, informed Judge Clark to draw together a team of medical experts in obstetrics, radiology, orthopaedic surgery and pelvic injury, urology and urogynecology who advised her throughout the process. Hundreds of hours were spent going through each applicant's medical records. Each applicant received an individual, careful and fair assessment. Medical evidence was sought to explain delivery records and when claims couldn't be reconciled with facts, the applicant was examined by an orthopaedic surgeon or by a gynaecologist. Some applicants were examined by several experts. When all efforts failed to obtain records, the scheme moved to seeking secondary proof of synthesiotomy by scar and radiology evidence. 
In 12 especially difficult applications, Judge Clark held a discussion conference between her own medical team and the medical expert representing the women, and a consensus was reached based on the medical facts in the case. Uh, and I know that it's probably called comfort to the people that you um, are representing, but just to remind you again that there were three organisations who were advancing the cause of women who, um, who were scarred by symphysiotomy, and the um, scheme was actually accepted by two out of the three. Um, and so I suppose it's, it's worth bearing that in mind. Thank you, Minister, and thank you, Deputy.